What's up guys? I'm doing a little work around the house today. Um, still hot and dry, man. You can see the uh, Bermuda out there showing some yellowing. I've been watering this in here so it's not as bad. And on the other side of the pool in the fence, I've got the uh, Steve Willie Memorial Rose Gardens. And uh, I've had a little fescue test plot in there, but I've done some stuff to uh, pump that fescue up to help it deal with the heat. Let's go check it out. Oh my God, it must have backfired whatever I did over here in the Steve Willie Memorial Gardens, Rose Gardens, sorry. Uh, the Steve Willie Memorial Rose Garden is in between blooms right now. But what the heck happened to the fescue? No. I got tired of watering the fescue. All my focus on watering, which I don't have a whole lot of time, is going up front to what I'm doing in the front yard. I sprayed this out with glyphosate, and uh, this is kind of like a little experiment area for me. I like to do different things here. But uh, I'm gonna go uh, to a buddy of mine's house in the morning and pick up some zoysia plugs and plug this out and do some different things to uh, make the you know make the plug spread so i gotta clean this up and get it ready for the plugs in the morning so i'm gonna mow it down rake it out and all that i don't see any need to really show much video action about that but anyway i i, I killed it on purpose steve willie's not dead <laughs> but it's still the steve willie memorial rose garden all right I'm gonna do this and I'll crank this thing back up in the morning and uh, we'll, uh, we'll go check out my buddy Paul's place. Uh, he's, uh, he's got an interesting little gig over there where he's pulling some zoysia plugs and uh, he didn't know it yet. We're gonna rename, his name is Paul too. We're gonna rename his uh, Facebook business, Paul's Prime Plugs. I'll see you guys in the morning. All right, we're at my buddy Paul's house today. He's the guy who, uh, sells the uh, zoysia plugs on YouTube. He didn't know it yet, but we're gonna start calling these things Paul's Prime Plugs. <laughs> <laughs> but Paul, tell me a little bit about how you did on this backyard. He, he actually restarted this whole backyard from, he took it back from the woods and made it zoysia grass with his own plugs. Tell me a little bit about how you did it, Paul. Once we cleared the trees out, we came in and kind of leveled it off a little bit. Nothing but red clay out here, but that's what we had to work with. Um, what I did is I came in and moved plugs from the front to the back, 12 to 18 inches apart, and uh, let it fill in on its own. We got some shady areas in the back, back this way, and on the other side that are still a little bit thin, but the plugs are spreading. Mm. How did you decide to sell these things on uh, on uh, fa Facebook? I don't have Facebook, I can't ever remember <laughs> what I What I did was I edged the road um, last spring, about a year and a half ago, and uh, I couldn't, I couldn't take myself to throw this roll of sod away. You know, it was maybe 12 mm -hmm. inches by 50 or 60 feet long. So I put it on the marketplace and uh, had 30 or 40 responses the first afternoon. Wow. And I had just bought the plugger so I could equip the backyard. The pro plugger, by the way. He got me one too. That thing works way better than what I had before. That's, that's the trick. It All right, is. we're going. Show a little bit of what he's what he's doing here to pull some plugs out to do this spot. But hold on, I flip here. He just takes the uh, pro plugger and plugs a little section out. That's the pro plugger. We'll see a little bit more of that later. And there's grass plugs. Pretty cool. Grass looks good too. All right, this is where Paul started pulling his plugs out this summer. You, know, you can see it's a big spot, but he started down in here. Pulled them out all up here. You see how it's recovered already from the spring. And then he said this section right here was the last section he, do, he had done and then he's moved to the backyard. But I mean, this was just from a couple of weeks ago. 
All right. I don't good. know how good it's showing up on the video, but Paul's yard looks amazing. It's uh, this is Myers Zoysia, right, Paul? That's right. Z52, and uh, what what makes it look so good, in my opinion, is that he's he's had the uh, he's put the X green on it and uh, RGS, and and you got Air 8. I got your Air 8 yep. too, didn't I? All right, but yeah, man, that stuff kicked it in. That, he doesn't have irrigation here either now, and it hasn't rained a whole lot, but he's he's been watering the the snot out of it, I'm sure. But it it looks good. Let me let me flip it around and we'll show you some some yard footage. That looks great. I got it all mowed down and raked out, and I, I've got everything out here killed pretty sufficiently <laughs> with glyphosate. I've been missing the boat on this thing right here. This is a pro plugger. It's just a tube, man, and you 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 can plug 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 you don't have to dump until it fills up and then you just dump it out the top so uh for transferring plugs or putting in these new plugs like this uh just so much quicker than what i had and uh this this is a cool tool when it's got two different uh rings to go with a different depth of plug hole but you can plant flowers whatever with this thing little annuals in six packs or whatever make you nice little holes for it but uh, great tool right here, highly recommend it. And uh, you know, anybody with a warm season lawn that's trying to repair bare spots or whatever, you go plug a spot where it's good and vigorous, fill it back up with sand and start moving the plugs over into your problem areas. And uh, th this tool will be very handy for you. But you know, the fescue out here was doing okay, but I didn't water as much as I should and you know, it would, look like crap and you come water 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 it bounce back and look good same reasons a lot of people get tired of having you know fescue lawns here in the in the south and uh without an irrigation system it's just uh it's a lot of trouble and maintenance to to keep up if you have to manually water it but uh i i like experimenting out here so we're gonna try paul's paul's prime plugs out here <laughs> in the steve willie memorial rose garden um and just do some different stuff to see what affects it the most as far as our grow in. I might do something in one section that I don't do in another section and just uh, see if there's any difference in it. So get a little experimenting into it. I'm going to plug some holes. Um, I haven't really got real precise and measured. I got 400 plugs. And I've got this area and then there's another area the same size running this way. It's like an L shaped wool fence down area right here. But I'm going to get plugging. I'll set you up, let you see some of the uh, plug-in action. It's hot out here too, good God. All right, so I got you on the, you're on the fence. <laughs> that uh, UFO tripod is a pretty nifty thing. Let's see if I can get where you can see. All right, you just step on it and start making your holes. Couldn't be easier. Now that one didn't come out. I got to put a twist on it. It's sandy back here too, kind of. But anyway, I'm gonna do this 400 times and show you the end result. All right, got a bunch of little holes poked in. We'll put the plugs in them and see how far this goes. I didn't count them or anything. It's not not being very scientific, but uh, I have a feeling I'll be able to come back in the middle down each row and offset another another row in there. All right, here we go. Okay, I got the first at about 175 in, and I did something really stupid. I had my pro plugger set on kill when it should have just been set on MAME. Okay, there's a there's the kill plug, and right there's the MAME plug. Um, this is uh, this is one of the Zoysia plugs. 
So my first uh, 150 or so are actually setting in the ground a little bit. I, I, I didn't do that on purpose, I just screwed up, but I wasn't gonna come back and fill the holes in. So I uh, guess we'll see what happens. I don't guess it'll hurt. I mean, it'll hold water in there and they'll, they'll come out of there eventually, I guess. But I'm gonna come back in in the gaps. I just wanted to see how far the first uh, batch of them would go. <laughs> Some of them are a little deeper than others. I, I guess it'll hurt. <laughs> oh, dang. But anyway, I'm gonna adjust my <laughs> my pro plugger to the shallower hole setting to get the other 200 plugs in. Oops. Pretty sandy and dry back here on the top, actually. And on the uh, shallow setting, which just means putting the smaller ring on the end of the pro plugger, I'm having a hard time pulling the dirt plug up. It's just falling back out. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to wet this down a little bit more and see if that helps it stick together and come out. And if that doesn't work, I'll just go back to the deeper hole. Okay, I got a nice wheelbarrow load of dirt now to do something with. It's hot out here. My word is hot. Um, you can't even see them in there hardly. They're so small, but there's 400 in this area. So. I'm going to spray some uh, Green County Fertilizer Root Growth Stimulant and dethatch on it to help me get rid of some of this... Uh, dead stuff from where I killed off the fescue. I'm gonna get to that. I'm gonna run uh, the RGS to try to push me some growth on these plugs and push roots and the dethatch. Um, also will, will give me a good uh, nutritive boost when it dissolves all that uh, dead uh, fescue and crawdo on top of the ground there. I didn't get it raked out, you know, to the max but uh that should help that that bit and uh i'm gonna mix them up now uh i i haven't measured that area in there but i'm gonna put enough in the chapman here to cover a couple thousand square feet i can go spray it around the yard somewhere else if i don't use it all up here but uh i'll go about three or four ounces per thousand of the rgs and the uh Dethatch says nine ounces per thousand. And I shook them both up. I'm gonna put them in the uh, sprayer. Mix that up. All right, I shook these up pretty good. But uh, so I was gonna have about 2,000 square feet. So I'm gonna put about eight ounces of the RGS. This is a brand new bucket, so it's heavy. Oh, wow, does it stink too. Eh, that's more like 12 ounces. Live on the edge. Nine ounces per thousand of this deep edge here. Brand new bucket as well, so. There's some goodness in there. I'm come in the lab here, find some fertilizer for this. 1838 DX8. I don't know. Carbonix. Yeah, I don't know. It's over here. Some 15015 back there. Ah. Oh, here we go some some X green on it 818 all the goodies get the uh, I, I mixed up the uh, 
uh, dethatch and RGS, but actually I'm gonna spray, spread some uh, X green on it first. I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna go pretty heavy. I don't, I don't know what the rate is. I'm just gonna, just gonna sling it on there till it looks good. I wanted to look more gooder than that. Turn it up. Spray them with the heat uh, thatch and RGS now. Hope this doesn't bring this fescue back to life. Raise this a little bit. Okay. Yes, son. Now, as you can see, that was super scientific. I just dosed the heck out of it. I didn't really measure anything out. Anyway, there you go. I'm gonna water it and. Uh, Hopefully by tomorrow we'll be covered with grass, right? That little area was nowhere near 2,000 square feet, but I just mixed up that much worth of the RGS and dethatch because I wanted to use it on a couple other spots in the yard. Um, it's just a, you know, a, I don't even know, but it's just a few hundred square feet in there. Um, I will mow some yards. We'll check out some zoysia yards out in the field. I think I'm going to get uh, maybe two today, maybe three. I don't know, but I got to mow about... 10 or 12 yards and uh we'll check out the zoysia yards and we'll talk more zoysia Hang all right this is a little zoysia yard this is the seeded kind uh, it's called zenith uh right now it's dried up uh it needs water bad but uh i'm due to I mowed it today but i'm due to put some fertilizer on it but i i'm not messing with that till it rains on it a little bit it's cooked all right, here's some zoysia I pulled out of this yard here before I mowed it. Um, try to do a little ID stuff on it. Um, you're going to find that zoysia is uh, rolled in the uh, vernation. And this particular one, you can see where it goes up. It's almost uh, alternating where the leaves come off of it. Uh, stolons and rhizomes. So you're getting a lot of spread in action. This stuff is crazy thick. I don't have a seed head to show you. If I would let this go long enough to get a seed head on it, I couldn't mow it. It, uh, when I first started treating this yard after I had fertilized it a couple times, he didn't want me to mow it, but he was mowing it. And uh, he, had, he had probably the nicest 21 inch mower you could get at Lowe's Depot or whatever, but it wouldn't cut it. It, could, it couldn't get through it. And my walker struggles to get through this yard. This yard is crazy thick. Um, but anyway, there's your little, little zoysia. You're always going to have your, it's, book says you're going to have some, some hair at the, uh, I'm trying to get this right. At the, like, <laughs> maybe you can see it there. Some hair at the, uh, ligule there. Oh, I can see it. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but anyway. There you go. This one's one of my better zoysia lawns. Zoysia will come on kind of slow in the spring, but I'll give you kind of an outline or, or a rundown on what I will generally do with zoysia. Um, in the wintertime, uh, you know, February-ish, it can get you down half rate of your pre-emergent. Um, then I'll don't uh, then I'll wait until I see it greening up a little bit and once it starts getting some green in it I'll go ahead and scalp it and that'll usually be you know really early in the spring well early ish in the spring it'll start greening up but it doesn't really get thick and and crazy going until well right about now actually uh, June July um, so I go ahead and scalp it when I first start seeing some green in it then when it's hundred percent greened up a couple weeks after that I'll put a half a pound of nitrogen on it. And this particular one, I did that with uh, Carbon X. And uh, it, it responded kind of slow. Like I said, zoysia comes on a little slower from what I see than, say, a Bermuda or a centipede or something. Um, then uh, we also, 
that time we did a weed control and a grub. Well, I don't remember if we did. I, I might have done something for grubs over here. I can't remember. But I uh, usually will spray this yard with Celsius or Monument. Um, did Celsius on the first go round, and uh, so we're in the early spring, and then uh, about. I don't know, early June, I hit it again with uh, Carbon X at a half pound of nitrogen rate. And probably coming up toward the end of this month, I'm gonna do another half pound of nitrogen and I'm uh, due to spray it with Monument. And uh, I wanna hold off, number one, because I'm not gonna do it today because I want it uh, in between mows kinda when I come over for one. And uh, two, I need uh, pretty adequate ground moisture for the monument to take effect like I want it to. And the other reason is I'm gonna be doing my fescue fungicide applications all next week and I do not want to have to worry about, I don't, I don't wanna have to clean out the tank as well as you would to uh, go from, from monument to uh, fescue. Monument will waste fescue. Anyway, where was I? Oh yeah, so then we, uh, we uh, go into uh, the uh, fall. I don't really do much. I keep an eye out for insects. Do that all summer, you know, when you're on them. Anytime you have an insect problem present, you know, you might want to go ahead and treat that if it if it's uh, to the level that it warrants it. Um, you know, keep a check on your your pH, all that kind of stuff. Uh, soil test. Do what your soil test is recommending as far as uh, pH. Uh, just just not a lot of uh, out of the way maintenance on uh, zoysia. Um, it is uh, it, it thatch is a problem so the I, I will I manually thatch this in the uh, late spring with my dethatch rake from my walker. Check out that video. Um, anyway, that was here. Um, uh, you also want to keep an eye out for patch funguses. Um, you treat it pretty much. You don't have to, don't run a preventative usually on zoysia unless it is a yard that has had a problem. That's, I keep seeing that thinking it's a problem. That is a meter box cover. I'll cover that up. It's making it look up. Um, what's I talking about? Oh, we don't, <laughs> don't really need to uh, run preventative fungicides on zoysia or any warm season really like you do fescue. Um, just zoysia is one that is more susceptible than some of the zoysia in St. Augustine seem to be the uh, the fungus getting warm season grasses. But you would go ahead and treat those with something, you know, that will take out the particular problem you're having. So you'll have to read your label and figure out what that is and what you'll have to identify your fungus and see what the problem is. Patch funguses are usually a big, a big problem in zoysia and uh, we usually if we get it, we'll run the uh, azoxystrobin propiconazole mix at the curative rate. And I will actually, they don't recommend that you nitrogen when you have a fungus problem, but I will also run a decent dose of nitrogen and something like Green County fertilizer root growth stimulant, and uh, it'll, it'll grow that crap right out. Sometimes, if you have a fungus in warm season, uh, like some ring or something in uh, Bermuda grass or, or anything like that, any kind of stoloniferous grass. I, I, sometimes I'll try to uh, hit it with, with some humic acid kelp and uh, a little nitrogen and I can usually grow that problem out. Anyway, nothing crazy out of the way about zoysia maintenance. Zoysia is some awesome grass. It, uh, it doesn't get as dark as uh, you know, you're really good hybrid Bermudas, but uh, the, this yard right here is a showstopper, man. People drive by and look at it, and the guy who lives here, he always is getting comments, and he's thrilled to death. But uh, I'll show you some close-up on this stuff, and we'll go look at the back, too. I've got a goose problem in the back, and the homeowner made him a goose fence this week, so maybe we'll get that uh, fixed up. But I'm going to show you some of this stuff close-up. It's pretty nice. Close-up. Where's your grass run down? This stuff is thick. Like I said, it's, it's hard to even get a mower in it. <sighs> Let's see if I can get that in there. I mean, I, I cut a little taller than you probably should, but I can't, I can only come over here once a week. But uh, if uh, you were the uh, kind of guy who liked to cut your grass, 
two or three times a week, you could get this down low and it would look really nice. That's some, that's some bad stuff right there. All right, here's the back and it leads down to this pond. So we were having geese just murdering it down there close to the pond. And it's got some heat stress in it right now. Uh, well, drought stress probably more than likely. Uh, it hasn't rained much at all here and it's hard to keep up with it with just irrigation. But uh, the back actually has just come on here in the last couple of weeks to a really good level. Carbon X is what I've been using on this. And I also run RGS and uh, humic acid. And I think I'm going to run dethatch on it uh, with my next uh, fertilizer treatment, which will be coming up here pretty soon. All right. All right, there's several different kinds of zoysia grasses. Uh, there's um, the Myers, which I'm pretty sure this is, and the uh, it's what I put in the yard today. They also call it Z52. There, there's just tons of different kinds. There's one that comes from a seed called Zenith. Uh, uh, the compadre is grown at the local sod farm here and is real successful. It looks good. It's a wider blade. It almost kind of has a centipede appearance, but I don't want to put it in the centipede category, but it will mix pretty decently with uh, centipede if, if you have to, but uh, it, it makes a, the, the compadre makes a really nice yard too. All right, just a little zoysia grass stuff, and uh, we're going to We'll get Paul's prime plugs online. We'll uh, we'll get Paul to put a uh, link up in the comments. But uh, thanks to him for having us over this morning and the and the grass plugs. It's going to be really fun filling in that area. I hope I, <laughs> I hope I didn't goof it up where I put the ones in too deep. Maybe it won't be a problem. They I, they're going to shoot out of there because they're going to get so much water in those holes. That's what's going to happen, right? The roots are going to be deeper. It's going to be awesome. I did it on purpose. All right, well, thanks for watching. That's all I can think about right now about zoysia grass. But uh, if I think of some, something else, I'll turn this thing back on for a second. Check you all out later.